Horror games are crazy popular right now and I'm probably not allowed to call myself a real indie game developer because I haven't tried to make one yet. Today I'm gonna change that. I thought about it for a while and figured it would be fun to do an escape the room type horror game and I only have 24 hours to do it in. Honestly, I'm pretty surprised how well the final product came out so stick around and let me know what you think. Let's start this counter and get to game design. There will be 6 rooms, each with a puzzle that you need to complete. The puzzles will all have a similar feel to them. You will need to do something in the room that might attract the monster, but doing the puzzle right will keep you safe. Once you complete the puzzle, you will find a key that opens the door to another room. Once you complete the last puzzle, you will find the master key which you can use to win the game. I got to work on greyboxing the general layout of the map. Greyboxing is the process of, well, placing grey boxes all over the place till you have a somewhat functional map. And then you would generally send the grey box off to your art team who will turn it into something more pretty. But I don't have an art team so I'll probably just send them to your mom. After a bit of time, I had the general layout done, 6 empty ash rooms. I popped in a character controller and made sure everything felt okay size wise. Now the most important thing for a horror game is not fun gameplay, no, it's having a scary ass monster. I scrolled through my asset packs till I found this beautifully terrifying asset which even has a slider to control this. She fits in perfectly with the theme I thought of which is a rusted metal old lair of some kind. She doesn't really do anything yet though except stand there and slither but she still kinda creeps me out which is a good thing. I'll add some AI to her in a bit to make her scary as F. At this point I've used up about 4 hours of time so yikes let's get to puzzling. Room 1 is your safety net. There is no way for the monster to get you in here and it's meant to teach you about the keys and these doors are added without using a boring text based tutorial which I am way too lazy to make. There are color coded keys that you'll need to find. The blue key will only open the door with the blue lighter above it. <laughs> Genius, I know. In room 1 there is a blue key on the desk but the door has a yellow light so you won't be able to open the door till you find the yellow key which is hidden in this cupboard. I made all the models in Pro Builder which is a level design tool made by Unity. For things that open like doors and the cupboards I added these triggers in front of them and created interactions that play an open animation when you press the F key, as long as you're inside the trigger anyway. This all works great except it's not nearly creepy enough. I deleted all the lights from the scene and added a light switch that you need to turn on in the room. I made it so that sometimes the triggers that allow you to open the cupboards are disabled until you turn the lights on. The same goes for the keys. Sometimes they will be hidden until the lights are switched on. Ok well that took me another 2 hours so I started to pick up the pace. In room 2 you'll find this pedestal and you'll also see an oddly placed cupboard. You'll need to push the pedestal over which will then break revealing the key. But breaking the pedestal will tell the monster to rush into the room and you will need to hide behind this cupboard. Once the monster leaves you can get the key to room 3. Well, hopefully, uh, that's the plan anyway but AI hard and stuff so we'll see how that works in a bit. At this point I had already used up 8 hours, my anxiety was starting to kick in and my game wasn't even scary yet. But I got to work on room 3 which is basically a precision walking simulation room. You'll need to navigate a short maze of these pedestals and find the key to the next room on the table. Knocking any of them over will hopefully send the monster rushing in to give you a little kiss. With room 3 down I had used up 9 hours and at this point I was getting pretty bored of looking at grey boxes and wasn't scared of my game at all which means it can't be very good. I went and found a bunch of materials and started adding them to all of the models in the map. I went for a very rusted metal feel with concrete floors and tried to decorate the environment with some blood stains to add a bit of life or uh, death. Things were looking so much better and the environment felt super creepy. I was getting really excited at this point and couldn't help but wonder how much creepier some ambient music, noises and sound effects might make things. But we'll get into that in a bit. Foreshadowing. The audio makes it 1000 times creepier. I decided to complete one more room before getting to work on the AI. In room 4 you will need to switch the lights on before you can open any of the cupboards to find the key. Once you switch the light on though an alarm will start blaring and the monster will rush in and begin patrolling the room. You'll need to learn the monster's patrol movements and find the key in the room whilst the monster is really close by which should be pretty terrifying, hopefully. With 10 hours used up I figured it was time to get some AI done. I made a behavior tree for the monsters which just gives her a set of instructions to follow based on the state of the game. For example if we knock over our pedestal in room 2 she comes rushing in and if we turn the lights on in room 4 she does the same thing but starts patrolling in a set pattern that you can learn so that you can avoid her and find the key. She's pretty lame right now though cause when she sees you she kinda just slithers at you and stares at you and I'm not sure what's up with her blinking situation so I'll need to make a proper cutscene jump scare 
scared type vibe. The AI took me a fair amount of time and I had now used up 16 hours, so I decided to finish up the last two rooms. Room 5 is a key code puzzle. You will need to press these buttons in the correct order and then you can open the safe where the key to the last room will be. I placed the code sequence in some easy to spot areas in one of the other rooms and I also added these bloody handprints around that give a sense of lore to the game and make it feel like someone had tried to escape before and left you some clues behind to help you out. Room 6 needed to be the hardest room to navigate so that you could keep getting all the way to the end of the game before consistently failing and raging at your computer because you keep getting eaten by a scary snake lady. To make this happen, I popped in a bunch of these laser pointer things that move around the room non-stop and make it difficult to get to the master key which I placed on this table at the back of the room. Playtesting this level almost made me throw my computer out my window. With all 6 rooms done, I had used up 20 hours of my time and I had 4 hours left to make a jump scare, add audio and make some UI menu type stuff. I got to work on the audio and this honestly had the biggest impact. I added this ambient creepy background music and these sound effects when you switch lights on, pick up keys or open cupboards. Next I got to work on the jump scare that happens when the monster catches you and finished up the UI. At this point, I'd worked on the game for about 23 hours and decided to leave it there so that I could get back to work on They Come In Waves, which is my zombie survival indie game. Please check it out and add it to your wishlist. I uploaded the game to Itch. You can find a link to it in the description. I've also put affiliate links to all the assets I used to make this game happen in the description below. Making use of those really helps my channel out, so thanks to those of you who do. Let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.